Cellular respiration can be broken down into three main stages, glycolysis, the citric acid cycle, and oxidative phosphorylation. Glycolysis then is the first pathway used by cells to break down glucose for energy. It is a metabolic pathway in which glucose is broken down into pyruvate in the cytoplasm of the cell, and it takes place outside the mitochondria, whether oxygen is present or absent. In other words, it takes place under both aerobic and anaerobic conditions. Glycolysis splits glucose, a six carbon sugar molecule, into two molecules of pyruvate, which is a three carbon molecule, four ATP molecules, two water molecules, and two molecules of NADH are also produced. However, two ATPs are used during the energy investing phase, so this results in a net gain of only two ATP molecules from glycolysis. This pathway involves 10 reactions, and each reaction has its own unique enzyme. It can be helpful to divide this pathway into an energy investing phase, which uses up ATP, and an energy harvesting phase, which produces ATP. The first half of glycolysis, the energy investing phase, involves the following five steps. Step one, the enzyme hexokinase is used to phosphorylate glucose using ATP. This reaction results in glucose 6-phosphate. Step 2. The enzyme phosphoglucose isomerase is used to convert glucose 6-phosphate to fructose 6-phosphate. Fructose 6-phosphate is an isomer of glucose 6-phosphate, meaning both these molecules have the same molecular formula but have different structures. Step 3. The enzyme phosphofructokinase uses ATP to phosphorylate one end of fructose 6-phosphate. Phosphofructokinase is a rate-limiting enzyme, meaning that there is less activity from this enzyme when ADP levels are low and the concentration of ATP is high. In this way, when there's sufficient ATP in the system, the step of the pathway slows down. At this point along the glycolysis pathway, two ATP molecules have been used, resulting in the production of fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Step four, aldolase breaks down fructose 1,6-bisphosphate into two different three carbon sugars, dihydroxyacetone phosphate, also known as DAP, and glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, known as G3P. Step five, Triose phosphate isomerase converts DAP to G3P, which is an isomer of DAP. This reaction is fully reversible, but proceeds in this direction because the G3P is immediately used as a reactant for step six, the beginning of the energy harvesting phase. As mentioned earlier, there is a total of 10 steps that make up glycolysis. We just looked at the first five steps. The next five steps make up the second half of glycolysis, the energy harvesting phase. Step six, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase catalyzes a two-step reaction. The first reaction oxidizes G3P with the coenzyme NAD to make NADH. Energy is produced from this reaction to power the second reaction, where a phosphate group is oxidized to form 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. Step 7. Phosphoglycerate kinase catalyzes the transfer of a phosphate from 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate to ADP. This phosphorylation reaction results in ATP and 3-phosphoglycerate. Step 8. Phosphoglycerate mutase rearranges the phosphate in 3-phosphoglycerate to make 2-phosphoglycerate. Step 9. Enolase removes a water molecule from 2-phosphoglycerate. This results in the formation of a double bond between two carbon atoms. Phosphoenol pyruvate is also produced. Step 10. In this final step, pyruvate kinase catalyzes the transfer of a phosphate from phosphoenol pyruvate to ADP. This results in the formation of pyruvate and ATP. 
Remember that glycolysis occurs under both aerobic and anaerobic conditions. If no oxygen is present, cellular respiration cannot take place and instead alternative pathways are followed to produce energy for the organism. However, if oxygen is present, the product of glycolysis pyruvate enters the citric acid cycle, the second stage in cellular respiration.